take a look now at the natural twist turns and I think it would be good if you go back and look at some of the videos we've done in the studio and also some of the videos that I've done with some of my other students where I had couples that could do it with a partner. Uh, but we need to make sure once again that you have the alignments right and the feet in the right position. It's, it's true in most dances that the feet are in the right position, they're in the right position because the body's moving correctly. Or looking at it the other way, putting the foot in the right position often will tame the body and cause it to move the way it's supposed to. Technique is written as a result of what we naturally do when we dance, when we're dancing well. So when we're learning the technique, it helps that someone else has figured that out. But as we learn to dance, those things become very, very natural to do. One of the things that keeps happening a lot, and it happens even when we dance together, when we're not just doing Zoom lessons, and you're not the only one, is it's so typical for the man on step two of the promenade to try to move into the lady's space. One of the reasons that happens is, of course, that this is a tricky action of having to turn the hips slightly and to bring the thighs in and to get this swinging action of the leg once again around the other leg because we cannot keep our hips still without turning and put the foot across like that without really inhibiting our movement. So there is a slight turn under the waist as we try to resist at the top. And also that moving of the leg to the outside, which then flicks it back to the inside, is a bit of finesse that we have to practice. Because in the end, we don't want the hip pushing through in the promenade. We also don't want to step across the line of the lady. Now, when we're dancing a natural promenade turn, then the second step for the man is not forward and across in promenade position and CDMP. It's forward in CDMP, but not across. Now you'll notice when I do that, the difference from there to there is still not this way. So what happens when I take that step with the intention of rolling around the lady is it, it changes the direction in her hips so that she'll take her foot here instead of in the normal position where we're both stepping on those diagonals the promenade. But that's an exception. Most of our other promenades you must take forward and across. So otherwise what's happening the way we're dancing with this right leg dancing right in towards the wall if you, if you're really pushing into the line of the lady pretty strongly. So we want to make sure we don't do that. So when you're doing to dance the natural twist turn, and let's go back again to the alignment that we did when we were doing it from two walks and a link. Then we were diagonal wall, that's our alignment, and our line of direction and movement of direction is line of dance. The second step then taken forward and across in prominent position in CDMP. Then step three, you need to be backing, diagonal center, and when you cross your feet, you will be backing the line of dance. Now, a lot of times that doesn't happen. A lot of times you have not turned enough. Two, two errors that happen when we walk in the lady's track and take this step and maybe accomplish backing center, but we don't get to backing diagonal center and we don't get to backing the line of dance. So if we're not set up for the twist turn, we're going to have problems already by putting our, our cross diagonal center or in some other position. So that's the first thing that we want to do. I noticed when you were doing the, the twist turn that you're getting a little bit of a lift in the shoulders. And of course I understand that there's got to be some kind of an impulse to turn. We always have the need for something to help us go. And that's why so many of the men, when they start, will do something like this. Lift up the shoulders. They're looking for some kind of energy. So that's why we have preparation steps and the use of swing and so on, is so that we can take our body back to go forward or take our body left to go right. We need some kind of an initiation. So where does it come from? So let me go ahead and, and put myself backing the line of dance. 
Now, when I do that, when I cross my foot behind, I've already created a bit of an opening or a pie piece in my right arm. So the first thing is that I want to be aware of that. I think we've talked before about the characterization of the tango where we're, we're on the right side or we're on the center, and we're always moving the lady into those two positions. So I have been in promenade as I entered, so she is on my side. When I come around in front of her on step three, she is now on my center. When I cross my right foot behind, there is more space on the right side. So when she's on my center, I need to be aware of this opening. I give her space in the arm. Usually this is very tight there. And then we're trying to turn around at the same time as the girl. So that's the first thing I'm going to be very aware of is that her body is on my center and I have space in my right arm. Now, I'm going to indicate to the lady that I want her to slip her foot through in a very small step. I don't need to do a lot to create that. It does help, some of the men find it helps to think of the right leg pushing into the left leg beginning to create the curve. My weight is split here. It's between the ball of the back foot and the heel of the front foot. Although I don't have my toes lifted, my foot is flat, but my weight is more towards the back of the foot. So that when you turn, if I exaggerate that, I'm, I'm turning in the center of my feet. But I'm going to keep the ball of the foot against the floor. It's very important while I'm doing the twist turn that the weight remains on that heel now what helped you a lot was to actually think of energizing through that heel. Now I'm going to keep my foot flat again, but I'm going to energize through the back of the leg, through the heel, while I create the turn from my standing leg. This only changes as you accomplish the ending where you need to release the right heel now from the floor to the inside edge of the wall. Just another reminder, if you catch yourself in tango with both heels on the floor, it's a bad position. You're going to release that right there. But part of the problem here with the lifting of the shoulders was, first of all, perhaps not giving that space. When I give that space, usually it helps me to realize that my head weight is over my spine, not in the lady's space. And that as I remain not in the ball of that foot, but towards the heel of that foot until I come around on the other side, then I can feel much more stable. So in a way, I'm, I'm opening the door and inviting the lady to walk through. And then I'm using her body to help me to turn in sort of a spiral motion. A little bit like going through a turnstile. So I have some opening already in order for her to commence to walk past me. Now, I don't start to turn my feet immediately as she walks around me because then I'll get ahead of her and I'll lose the balance. So I have the sense, okay, I've delivered an invitation for her to step forward. And I'm going to allow my upper body to go with her a bit. All right, now I'm going to get my bottom turning. And then at the end, I'm going to finish by turning my right thigh and hip and finishing with my right elbow towards the wall. At any of those points, you can lose your balance or you can lose your shape. By keeping the head weight forward, it puts your weight into the toe. Especially then if you're too tight on the right side now, you're trying to turn, holding too tightly onto the lady and she's not able to help. If I try to turn exactly in one piece, it's a little bit stiff. You don't actually see the different parts of the body turning at different speeds. We don't even really see that in ballet dancers, except that we see the spotting of the head. And I will go over that exercise because that helps you to understand it. But we do, when we turn, turn in spirals. So for instance, we may have the upper body going and then the hips accelerating and then the upper body coming along we may have the upper body and then the hips and then the head at a different time. So even though we're turning around that axis, our blocks of weight 
will often turn at different speeds. And again, it, it's not something that you see. It appears that everything is turning at one time. So the exercise that we did, and this is helpful because you will need to learn also to use your head in rotation and in spotting, is an exercise that we do for spotting a turn. That is to find, it's not a spot, it can be that entire wall, it can be 15 feet of wall, but I will keep looking in that direction while I'm turning under my ears, the body. At this point, I can't keep my head there, I can't keep my face there, so I have to turn it. I'm turning it as far as I can, and now it's leading my body, and finding the spot means again finding the wall, and I'm allowing the body to unwind, passing through neutral, or passing through square, and picking up again on the other side. So that's a good exercise to practice to start to understand, let's say, just that part of the separation of the spiral turn, where you're turning the head at a different time than the rest of the spine. I'll go to the other direction. So uh, problems that we can get into is letting the head fall or taking the head first. Now, sometimes we do turn by taking the head first, and sometimes we turn the body underneath the head. So this is a skill that's going to come in handy for a lot of our figures in the, in the ballroom as well as other styles. So I'm going to turn the body, leaving my face where it is. Now the other place we can get stuck is here where we simply stop. I must continue my head now to lead my body around in the turn. When you see a ballet dancer doing this, you can actually see the head spotting in rhythm. One, two, one. You'll see the head coming around in a certain rhythm. What do you have to say? So Gandalf is saying hello, but I think that I've covered pretty much what we did. I know. So I'll catch up with you next week. Hey.